Hello all, my name is George Middleton. I'm Pastor George Middleton, Holy Fire Ministries and Holy Fire Christian Assembly. I am just letting you know I just returned back online and I've been working for this and I just wanted to share today a little bit of my testimony as we work with the church and we originally came with the idea and got it inspired the idea back in 2004. However, I want to go further back in my life. When I was a child, I have an aunt. Her name is Alta. Um, she said it when I was a kid. She used to drag me to church. We were talking just a couple days ago, just yesterday, and we were talking about where she took me to the church, and she took us both kids, whether our families wanted us or not. Our aunt made sure we went and the seed was planted. That was right around when I was six, seven years old. Now, from there, God had worked in my life, and I had people all throughout my teenage years, even though I was out in the world doing my own thing. I had people tell me, you're going to be a pastor someday, and I'd laugh and I'd mock at them. I'd mock them. I'd say, yeah, whatever. What about my way being the foul, stingy self I was? Well, God told me later in life to serve. Well, God had called me to serve after my mom's death. I tried drinking myself to death. Tried doing drugs, tried to kill myself with drugs, tried to kill myself with alcohol. Then, back in 2000, I met Crystal. It's actually 99, uh, December of 99. Right around November, December there. And in April, I moved from California where I was living. Life of sin, partying still. Moved to Pennsylvania. Went to several churches. Could not find the right church. Couldn't find the right church home. As a lot of people call it but that's not what God was wanting me to do that's why I was uncomfortable those churches needs were being met my place was not in those churches went to a church that was just starting it was still in the house it was still being founded God said I want you there you will learn from the ground up I became head deacon of that church I will not leave, mention the name out of respect for that pastor and out of respect of the town. Because God says not to disdain and not badmouth others. However, when we stray, God puts it on our heart to walk away. Well, I was head deacon of the church, and when I seen them straying and falling off that path of righteousness, I walked away. I started having church in my home. Studying. That's all we were doing. We weren't even having church. We were studying. That's all we were doing was Bible study. Still reading the Word. Still studying. We weren't even starting services. <coughs> kind of stepped away a little bit. Pardon me for that. But then on top of that, God had moved a little bit further. I hadn't slept in a few days. God says, well, guess what? I'm calling you. I woke up, it wasn't my wife's voice, it wasn't my family's voice, it was nobody in the house. I even went as far as grabbing a baseball bat and checking the whole house, checking the windows, checking the doors, because we lived in a pretty rough neighborhood. Well, God says no. I went back, the leg back down, started to fall asleep. Here I go again and hear this voice. I get up, go around again. Kind of made my wife a little upset at me because of this. It woke her up. She's like, I'm sleeping. Leave me alone. Go back to bed. So I did. It offended her a little bit. And I, to this day, still laugh about it but because it is funny. The third time, God called me three times. He called me by name. That is when I happened to go and look into First Samuel. It took me about five, six hours, actually. After that third time, I knew it had to be something spiritual. And so I went and I looked in my Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 3. Depending on your Bible, this one's kind of a little duct tape, masking taped together to hold it together. Because I've been reading it for years. And if we go into the Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 3, it talks about where... Eli was in the, Samuel was in the temple with Eli and the lamp had gone out the lamp of the Lord had gone out in an era where not many people have been able to communicate directly with God and God saying hey this is what I want done it's at that era and at that generation and Samuel was called the same way 
So, I, in a sense, I am a first Samuel pastor. God had called me not from a seminary school, which I couldn't get financing for anyways if I tried to. I made attempts, made attempts to go through local churches. No one wanted to accept what God had called me to do. They said, it's, you're not a pastor, you're not this. I gave up on that. I said, no, I'm not giving up what God told me to do. I'm going to seek. I continued to study. I continued to read. And on a half circumstance, ULC Online, which is out of Modesto, which is a church I went to when I was a kid, a physical church that I went to when I was a kid, had happened upon having their website. I asked and made a request to them for ordainment. And on May 5th of 2004, I was ordained. I had two years of ministry in Pennsylvania. God said, shake the dust off your feet. Go where I'm sending you. It wound up being here to Lafargeville, New York, which I thought it was going to be a physical church. It wasn't. It was a spiritual church. It's a internet church that God wants me to found. Also, right after we moved, we moved in June of 2006. In August 3rd, we lost Troy Court. My beloved nephew, we'd been raising as our own child, he was struck and killed by a car. That tragedy set me back. Set me so far back that in my grief and in my anger, I had forgot who I was supposed to serve. So I fell sore. Well, I got to talking to my sister Donna Faust in Pennsylvania, a good, good beloved friend of mine, and pray for her continually and pray for her husband, Dave, because they're both awesome people, and they're both people that had helped me when I was down there, going through my struggles down there. When we went to a seminar, that's where I met these folks. Well, I got to talking to them just recently. It's been about, let's see, about five days now, six days now. Donna had inspired me. This is a woman that's in a wheelchair, a woman that is limited only by the wheels on her chair. Her spirit, her heart, her her fire, her drive is connected with God. And amazing as it was, it took her and my mother-in-law, Mother Mary of the church, she, they just, they kept, they kept praying, they kept praying, they kept praying. Donna kept speaking, kept speaking, kept speaking to me. Within three days, and you know God loves to work in threes. And in three days time, I've wrote over 18 lessons and sermons combined and even located the sermons that God wanted me to give and to share. And as we progress with this ministry, they will be online for people to download the lessons. The videos will be online to download. CDs will be available on special request. However, that, that might require a donation. I don't know yet how God's going to lead that. I'm not going to ask for a donation. That's something that is by of your own free will. However, this word is going to be produced. And it's going to be produced in video form and audio form. All you have to do is click the link in my space. It'll download the video. It'll download my testimony. As I close this testimony, I just want to let you know that whoever reads, whoever listens, whoever hears this, should share it with others. I encourage you to share it with others. My video card might be slow, so my video might be jerky. It might be a little blurry because of the camera. Who knows? But I just pray that you share it with everybody. Because it's just a gift. It's the gift of the word, and that is always, always, always free. All you have to do is seek his word, and that's where it is. God bless you all. And as I close, I am going to close this in a prayer. May the good Lord bless you and keep you in his will always. In Jesus' name, amen, and thank you for listening.